All right, I've got four pack. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got four packages. All right, and one of these is also not an anime thing, but uh, we'll open up the anime thing on the top first because this is the big box, and so this is easy. Um, wish I could say this one is near and dear to my heart, but uh, I'll be honest. I'm only familiar with the fact that it exists. I do believe this is another anime. Yeah. The one whose name I forgot. Hmm. Okay, I'll have to remember to edit that out. Which is unfortunate. It means that there were there's address on both sides of that package. Bad Amazon. Oh well. And then it's, and yeah, as, as you can see I finally picked up the new um Echoes of Wisdom game. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's anything in there, so it's not worth opening. So let's go through everything in there. We have Vinland Saga, season two, part two. I should say season two. Yeah, that's a big two right there. Okay. Uh, looking at the back real quick, I see a regions A and B. English and Japanese dubs. Different underneath the slip cover. Uh, coworker was mentioning this the other week. And I wasn't entirely sure if I was remembering correctly if this is Season 2 Part 2 of Vinland Saga, but yes it is. Alright. So our discs. Her art behind the thing. Okay. Then we have this one whose name I am having trouble reading. All I know is one of the major words starts with a G. Let me get the plastic off first. So I can take a better look. This is Panzer World Galliant. Complete original series. Okay, interesting. Regions A. Japanese with English subtitles only. 25 episodes plus 3 over 8. almost felt like there was something there. Here there's a loose disc. I think I want to put it in like this. So I kind of want to process what that actually says. It just says one. Oh dear. That's a two. These kind of don't want to go in. That looks like a three. Four. And then uh, if you couldn't tell what this is based on the pun, this is a near automata. I think it's just the first quarter because second quarter or second season, whichever, just aired. Now this one is okay. First, we got this. Can I actually read this? Near Automata, version one point one eight, volume one. Okay. What about anything interesting on the back? I think this is an Aniplex release, so it uh, tends to not. I see a compact disc and Blu-ray symbols there, so that means it should have a soundtrack with it, which could be quite notable. Uh, there we go. I think this is what I'm supposed to see. It's maybe hard to tell, but that looks like a flower. Possibly wilting. We have a lot of stuff to go through. So first of all, we have 
that on the inside, whatever it is. Looks like a bunch of hex. So there's a possibility that it translates into something. We have a piece of cardboard on the inside. I think it's supposed to align everything and make it more possible to take things out. So let's go in reverse order. We'll begin with this. What the hell? It's CD shaped, but it doesn't appear to be a CD. It is for decorative purposes only. This does not contain recorded video or audio. Please do not insert it into a player. This may cause the player to malfunction or the replica disc to become damaged. Huh. That's an interesting thing. I don't think I've ever received one though. I've probably seen like blank ones before, but huh. Intriguing. I'm trying to think of what you would do with it. Just put it there, since I've already forgotten what its orientation was. We have a book, and I'm having trouble telling what's drawn on it. I see some character art, some scenery looking stuff. Intriguing. Then we've got. Now that's definitely a plant. That's also a plant. I might be looking at these backwards, but. Seeing a little bit more keyframe sort of reference art stuff. Intriguing, intriguing. And then, last but not least, we have the actual discs. Jesus Christ, it's not at all because there's also these. If I put bumping this like a bumpkin, then I forgot she wore so little down below. I mean, to be fair, I've never played the game, so saying I could remember... I mean, it basically means what, what does a fan... There's definitely one more in here. There we go. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I only recognize her, and I think I've seen pictures of him, and I do believe they're Tomata, for lack of better knowledge on what they might be. I feel like these images have been upside down. Probably one of these... Sorry, that light did not help me. 9 through 12. We're going to try again. Let's see. This is... Blu-ray with one to four. So there, it looks like there's a total of 12 episodes, but interestingly enough, no CD. So it's interesting that the back has that. Let's make sure that goes there. Oops, I forgot to put this back in. Let's see if I can just flip this open. Put this there. Hmm. An intriguing place. Well, here's this week's physical anime collection update. All right, let's get to the list of stuff. That time I got reincarnated as a slime, season three, episodes seventy-one through seventy-two, dubbed. So you know, finally finished season three, dubbed with my Friday friend, and you know it was. Pretty nice. Let's see, you had that one and then that one, and overall I would say it was a less conflicty season than the previous two, but I think I said that before. And it's very pleasant in a very reincarnated as a slime way. Also, that last episode, I'm pretty sure again they had guest appearance from the character from the Crimson Bond movie. But I think I said that last time too, so pretty much the same. Entertaining ending to the season. My Hero Academia, Season 7. Finally, watched the first two episodes. That's episodes 139 and 140. 
going by the Crunchyroll numbering system. And I think if the second episode hadn't ended where it did, we probably would have watched episode three. But it was a very good... Here's how things are starting out, and here's us seeing an interesting, I guess, setup. And they introduced us to a character, Stars and Stripes, and she was actually pretty fun and pretty interesting. You know, the, the airplanes were a little strange, the stealth bombers, rather, whatever you want to make of them or call them. But, you know, for the most part, it was fine. It's like, sometimes it's like, uh, do they just have the ability to just sit there? Are they really more like hovercraft than airplanes? And, and, you know, that was just a weird thought. It wasn't the most important thing going on in there. And so, for the most part, it was seeing all that other stuff and... Yeah, entertaining enough. I, I think off to an interesting enough start. Going to have to see what happens in the next episode, though, because that's when it really gets back to our characters, I guess. Let's see. I'll become a villainess. That will go down in history. Episode 3. Oh, yeah. So this is the third episode, so it's time to start evaluating. And it's doing time jumps and story move forward stuff relatively quickly compared to how it was sort of pacing me, but it's been nice. And I would say that it was so nice that I actually kind of felt like going back and rewatching some of Level 9 Villainous and uh, Seventh Time Loop, which are both um, kind of in along the same genres a bit. I think Level 99 Villainous maybe more so, but at the same time, you know, they're definitely different vibes. So just because you like one doesn't necessarily mean you like the other, I would say. But um, I think I'll Become a Villainous seems pretty fun as of the end of Episode 3. So, I think I'm liking it. Uh, not sure if I would say it's my favorite one this season, but that's because next up is ReZero Season 3, Episode 53. Which um, has been a bit of an interesting doozy. I don't know how much I want to say other than, man, that's a kind of a strong emotional moment that one of the characters is experiencing there. And I actually don't mind it because it's, it's executed in such a heartfelt way. So, you know, I'm liking season three as it continues to go so far. Do, do Over Damsel conquers the Dragon Emperor. We finally got episode two. Um, lady's got a throwing arm. And I tell you what, she does some other interesting stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. Do I know what to think about this show so far? Hard to say, but it's been fun. Maybe not as fun as I'll Become a Villainous, but still fun. But we'll have to see. it. It's still got one more episode before it's says, oh, wow, this is actually a really interesting premise. I guess we'll have to see. Oh, sorry. I just wondering if there was anything to think about, but... Blanking. Loner Life in Another World, Episode 4. I guess it's entertaining. You know, I'd say not mind-blowingly. Oh, there's this one is great. But it is interesting, I think Sentai was recommending that, you know, Farming Life in Another World would be something you could also watch here. And I kind of agree, but Farming Life in Another World was just really nice. A sort of... I don't I just like the way that one builds things up. The way our, our main character is building things up in this one is interesting, but I don't know if we have as much of a feel for what the point or the goal is, which you could con contrast with... Um, Farming life in another world where that one you kind of know because it's like, oh yes, he's going to farm. He's going to build bigger farms and this stuff is going to happen. But, I don't know. I digress. Is it wrong to try to pick up Girls in a Dungeon? Season 5, Episode 3. Um, kind of hating the Freya Familia right now. I don't know if Freya herself is bad. She definitely has come up as potentially villainous a couple of other times. But when it comes to... Um, her familiar, hopefully it's not her whole familiar that's irredeemable pieces of shit, but and there's some of this that could also be just the way it was translated, mind your own business 
Asshole, you were just threatening to kill somebody that she cares about. You made it her business, you fucking scumbag. Ah, fuck that guy. Skin him alive. Beat to death all the people following his fucking commands. Fuck the Freya Familia. Well, so far, um, it, it made me put off watching the episode because I kind of didn't like them. But the interactions between um, Belle and What's-Her-Face... And through this episode was actually much nicer than I would have thought. In a way, it's not just all about them, but it also feels like it's deliberately setting up some story-related stuff. So, I complain about the Fray of Familiar, but I think it's an okay season. To me, I still think seasons 1, 3, and 4 are better. But we'll have to see how this compares to season 2. I, re I remember... Season 2, really hating whatever that familia is. I look forward to not knowing their name anymore. And, you know, maybe the Freya familia or something. We'll have to see. Goodbye, Dragon Life. Episode 3. So we finally have um, the third episode. Really hard to tell what to make of this show. Again, it's it's pretty nice. I kind of like watching it episode to episode. The characters are kind of neat. Questioning the way it's setting some stuff up there this episode where it's like uh people need their faces punched in but I don't know I guess we'll have to see maybe for me I kind of feel like is there a call to adventure going on here or not I don't know I'm not sure if this is oh well he's just laid back even though it gave the impression it was about maybe them starting to form a party or something I don't know who them all is but Entertaining, I guess. Dan to Dan, episode three. Granny vs. Granny. Entertaining, I would say. Um, the main girl character's grandma turned out to be a more interesting character. Kind of a piece of shit, but to a certain degree, you're like, eh. She's actually kind of fun. Enough so that, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And... I'd say that our main characters kind of showed their least abrasiveness in this episode, which I think maybe doesn't mean much, but it's something that I've complained about before. And I'd say our main girl's um, attitude is finally out of her ass, I guess. And the main guy characters still got some whiny pushiness, but now he's kind of got a direction and he's facing that direction and I think it's feeling a bit more natural, which I'm not surprised. I kind of expected this anime to very heavy-handedly point them in the right direction to grow. And so it's been a fun three episodes. Um, unless the show pulls off something pretty incredible, though, I think by this episode you probably have an idea of whether or not you're going to want to watch it. I think it's rating pretty high. So probably a lot of people are enjoying it, which is good for them. Uh, Mecha Ude, Mechanical Arms, Episode 3. Uh, let's see. What exactly happened there? Hard to say. I think it's a good show, but maybe, maybe not necessarily great. Some people are definitely going to watch this and really enjoy it. You know, it'll itch some... That special niche that it's itching. Uh, I've definitely, I feel like there's been shows kind of like this. The Boy with Superpowers sort of show. And the under, underestimated underdog one at that. And I'm not sure that this is necessarily like the best one there, but it, I think it's pretty solid, give or take. The um, problems I've also mentioned where I felt like there was something off with this storytelling. Nothing that makes it unwatchable, I thought, but things are just like, eh, maybe it makes it feel a little more artificial. I, I guess it was that it feels like it's just sort of going forward with its story. Like, I don't know, it's marching on and I'm not sure if it's flowing forward, so to speak. So, yeah, there could be a little bit of a feeling of artificiality there, and that's probably some of what I would say is making me hesitate to say, oh, this one is a mind-boggling masterpiece or something like that. Uh, overall, I'd say it's good. 
but for three episodes in at least. Uh, Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gale Online Season 2, Episode 3. Fun and entertaining stuff, although if there's any complaint I have about this episode, it's, while well, a lot of cool stuff happened, it didn't seem to involve our main characters that much. Affected them, yes, but it seemed to be just sort of awesome, thrown in for the sake of awesome a little bit. Like, maybe convenient, but I guess we'll have to see what the next episode follow-up is. But I guess, you know, entertaining enough stuff. I can't. I still can't compare it to the first season because I don't remember the first season. Maggie Lumiere, Magical Girls Incorporated. It says episode two here, but I know it was episode three because the Amazon thing makes it really obvious to me that it was three episodes. Um, and what can I say about this episode in particular? You had that. I'm tempted to call her cold-hearted bitch. Maybe not exactly. Um, you ended with something that's just like, okay, this is just kind of a neat thing about this company versus the other big company that we're seeing things being compared to. Maybe a couple things about that. But unfortunately, the episode ends in a way where it's like, I guess I'm not. we're not seeing the scope of what happens until the next episode. So, episode three and episode four are kind of a two-parter, which weakens the three-episode structure a little bit, I think. But it does make me feel like episode three showed promise for it to continue and to be good, but how long it continues to be good really depends. But, you know, overall, good. Dragon Ball Daima, episode two. This is the one which is, I'd say, the real beginning of the series, because the previous one is mostly set up, and this is one where you start seeing the characters interact, the setup, what it means for like Goku and Vegeta and Trunks and you know, basically everybody and you know, it's some Dragon Ball interesting neatness. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I have much else to comment on. It's if you're a fan of the kind of whimsical Dragon Heart, or not Dragon Heart, Dragon Ball stuff, I think this one um, kind of should be working in that regard. I mean, a lot of people are enjoying it, and the whimsy is the reason to enjoy it. At least at this point, hopefully through the rest of it, because sometimes when the shows get too serious, they're not that entertaining. But, yeah, this one's fine. Demon Lord Retry R, Episode 4. Exists. Um, I think this episode felt like it was pointed in a direction where the show is going, kind of. But there's something about it that still feels a very haphazard and not 100% put together narratively. I don't know how much is me versus the show's actually doing something off, but yeah, it's it's entertaining. Next we have the healer who was banished from his party, episode three. What all happened in this episode? Uh, I guess this is the episode where he interacts with the previous party again, where they're kind of like, oh, I guess he was actually kind of good, huh? They're mostly being dicks, except for one person where it's less like, uh, I don't know. For some reason, the interaction with the mage makes me cringe a little. And that might be more me than the show. I guess, for me, it's just like... I'm, I'm very wary about a show that... Um, I guess is reluctant to have any girls as bad guys. And always has to have the guys as bad guys. Because it's a really convenient and easy thing for them to do. But it also makes them feel like shallow stereotypes. And I don't feel like this show is doing shallow stereotypes. But they, maybe they're not that deep stereotypes, I guess. And it isn't just making him the bad guy. I think the other person, party, the other girl, other than the main guy... In the, in the uh, party that let our main character go. So you got the guy that appears to be their leader, and you have 
a girl that sort of seems to back his sentiments, although she had face bombed because he's also the stupid one, which is falling into some of those tropes, but those tropes are pretty omnipresent. Outside of that, I guess it did okay, but I'm, I feel like it's missing something because the next episode is the real follow-up to it. So it's kind of doing the same thing that um, Magical Magilumiere was doing in that episode 3 is really leading into episode 4, I think. And I guess we'll see what's awesome about it. But otherwise, it might not be awesome. That I think means it kind of fails the 3 episode test, but it might be okay or good. I th it certainly has felt good otherwise, other than my bitching and complaining, but um, yeah, I, don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Demon Lord 2099, Episode 2. I like this episode as well. I, I had good compliments for the first episode because it wasn't just that, oh yes, he's the Demon Lord awakened after 500 years in the weird world, but watch him be a... Um, uh, I guess a power trip. It's ha ha. No, instead it's about okay. He's directly dealing with a lot of the technology going on here. So it really is more about the setting and his interaction with it. And I kind of like what he does. He does stuff that's very person out of place sort of thing. And he does a couple of wild things because of it. But he does not seem to be like a pig-headed, retarded idiot about it. it. When somebody says, you can't just do that, and he's like, ah, I see. I understand. Sorry about that. I did not understand. And he, he's, he's nice, and his helper, I, I, her name was Makina, I think. She's really nice, too. They make a, a good, wholesome exploration into this unknown territory. I really like them together. Pretty nice. Um, as we incarnated Aristocrat, Season 2, Episode 16. I guess entertaining enough. A episode all about conflict. And I think unlike the other Episode 3s, I mean this is going to be, I think, the third episode of the second season. 13, 14, 15. Maybe this is the fourth episode. This is probably the fourth episode. It's, um, yeah, this is the fourth episode. Um, okay. Well, I was going to say, at least it didn't end where the previous episode threes were in terms of... Oh, here's a conflict. Instead, it's, it shows us the resolution of that stuff. Entertainingly done. And the next episode is when we see the, um, fallout of that, that stuff. So, I think a pretty good episode. Let This Grieving Soul Retire, Episode 4. Um, this this show continues to be a bit of a mix for me. I It looks like it really is just 100% um, leaning on uh, the, oh, he just happened to accidentally get it right sort of trope. And uh, Now, what this episode did that maybe more along the lines. It might not be that he's as powerless and clueless, but it may be something they may be saving for a season finale. But it did introduce one of his friends. And she's pretty entertainingly wild, with the main problem I had being it felt like a joke that went on a little too long. And I think part of the problem that is that was just what that was the main goal of this episode. And because of that, I think she didn't necessarily overstay her presence, but she may have pushed it a little bit. But overall, it was interesting. But yeah, I'm definitely, um, the show is at risk of being dropped. Uh, Suma Show, episodes two plus, I have not watched any of them yet. They're not completely off the radar, but they are definitely lower priority. So I'll have to think about it. The Most Notorious Talker runs the world's greatest clan, episode 4. I would say that if... So far, it seems like if you liked where episode 3 was, you'll probably enjoy episode 4. Maybe So maybe it's a good 3-episode marker that lets you know. Okay, yeah, because I commented that it seemed pretty brutal, and 
um, episode four, I think, continued that brutality, which I consider to be an overall good thing, because I feel like that's this show's identity. We've got brutal main characters. And it's neat. It's hard to say what to ultimately feel about it, because to some degree, the um, brutalness comes from, I guess, shitty things being set up around them. But I guess it's a formula, and you can make of that what you want. And I'm finding it kind of enjoyable. Um, Spirit Chronicles, Season 2, Episode 3. It was nice to see some characters. It was nice to see some discussion about overlap between characters. So, like, Latifah would, um, of course, also know Japanese and recognize the people from Japan and stuff like that. And what they decided to do, they being, of course, the people working on the anime, um, wasn't have us be intro. It wasn't have those characters meet each other, which is unfortunate because I think it's an interesting enough group of characters that it would be interesting to see them interact with each other. Each other. That's been one of the strong things this season so far, I would say. But episode three here wasn't about doing that. But. I'd say the contents were fine enough. Just really hard to tell what to think about the show from here, but I'm not sure how well I can think about that stuff considering that I um, binge-watched all of season one, so I'm not sure if I've got a good feeling of what the timing for this show is supposed to be. And then, last but not least, Ari Ferretta, season three, episode two, which I feel is a fun little carry-on from the previous episode. I'm not sure that we're seeing our main characters kick ass, but we're seeing an element of their world that had been built up before, that's being built up even more now, that's actually pretty fun. And instead of seeing our main characters be badasses, we're getting to more see them be... neat. Um, Hajime's interaction with, um... Rabbit Girl? not remembering her name too well, sorry about that, um, has been legitimately touching this season so far. Like a, oh yeah, he doesn't just have her as a punching bag or anything like that, she's someone he cares about. And it's very touching the way it's handled. Uh, do I have anything else to say? Uh, just enjoyed episode two. Beyond that, Dead by Daylight is doing a Halloween event. I think it's neat. I think people are complaining. I can understand some of the complaints. I think it's interesting because it gives something new to do and does interesting sorts of stuff. I at least tolerated enough to get through all of um, page one this week. Page one contained a lot of extra stuff, I think, some of which they were expecting people to do over the course of the event, if they were doing it slowly. But for me, since I don't know the timing and energy I'll have for all this stuff, while I had the energy and the time, I just completed that first page this past weekend. Because the next page comes out this week, and then the third page next week, and I think the event only runs until November 7th, so... Now, that pretty much means completing one page every week just to make sure I get everything that I want to get. So I'm trying to make sure I do that. Not sure if I have anything else to really comment about, so I'll go ahead and wrap things up here. Y'all, have a nice week.